Global variables and equations can be used in the design of SOLIDWORKS models to create mathematical relationships between dimensions. Global variables allow you to define a named value within a model that dimensions can be set equal to or that can be used in equations. Besides just utilizing global variables, equations can make use of existing model dimensions. incorporate mathematical functions, file properties, and measurements of the model to build in the desired design intent. By taking advantage of global variables and equations, you can leverage the full benefits of working with a parametric model and ensure features update as intended when modifications are made. In this lesson, I'll demonstrate some techniques for adding global variables and equations and show how they can be used to control the geometry of this part. I've decided to make all the small fillets and rounds of this housing design have the same radius. To ensure that the dimensions from the separate features always remain equal, I'll create a single global variable to control them. Global variables are defined within the equations dialog. I can access the Equations dialog from the menus under Tools, Equations. The Equations dialog has buttons at the top that enable four ways to view information. Each view shows a different combination and sequence of equations, global variables, and dimensions to help you perform tasks such as finding a specific equation, viewing all dimensions used in a part, and changing the order in which equations are solved. Sketch Equations view allows you to enter equations that drive dimension values within a sketch. Here you can reference existing sketch dimensions or utilize other mathematical functions to drive a sketch dimension. The Dimensions view will list all dimensions that exist in the model. Dimension names and values can be modified here. The Ordered view option shows global variables and equations in the order they are solved. By default, equations are solved in the order they are created. Using the option Automatic Solve Order at the bottom of the dialog allows SOLIDWORKS to automatically determine the order of equations to avoid potential solution issues such as infinite loops. Alternately, this view can be used to reorder equations. This is also the only view where an equation that's been suppressed can be accessed. To search any of these views for specific values, equations, global variables, or dimensions, I can use the Filter field to type in information I'm looking for. I'll use the Equations view to create the global variable for the fillets in this part. I'll left-click in the cell to add global variable and name it SM radius. I'll click in the Value Equations cell and set the value to 3. I'll also add a comment to make sure the purpose of this variable is understood. Clicking OK will close the dialog. The next step is to set all of the dimensions for the small fillet features equal to the newly created global variable. I'll double-click fillet 2 so I can access the feature dimension in the graphics area. Double-clicking the dimension causes the Modify box to appear. And typing an equal sign allows me to define an equation to drive this dimension. When creating an equation, a drop-down menu becomes available with options to use within the equation. I'll choose Global Variables from the list and select the SM radius value I created. I'll click OK to accept the dimension and complete the link to the global variable. Notice that the dimension is now shown with an equation symbol preceding the value. If I double click the dimension again to modify it, I can see the value is grayed out and cannot be directly changed. There is also a button shown with the global variable icon. This button can be selected to toggle between the dimension's value and the global variable name being used. I'll repeat the same procedure to set the other small fillet features equal to the global variable. Fillet 4, Fillet 5,
and fillet 6 will all be set to use this same value. And I'll rebuild the model. At this point, if I wish to modify the radius for the small fillets in the part, I simply need to change the value for the global variable and all these separate features will update. To test it out, I'll access the equations dialog again and make a change. Once there are global variables or equations that exist in the model, the equations dialog can be accessed directly from the feature manager tree. An equations folder is now shown here and can be expanded to view global variables that have been created in the model. The display of this folder is controlled by system options. Right clicking in the feature manager pane provides a shortcut to access options to hide and show tree items. The default setting is to have the equations folder set to automatically show, which means it's only available when equations exist in the model. But if I prefer to always have this folder shown or hidden, the options in the drop down menu allow me to accomplish this. Now, back to the model. To access the equations dialog from the feature manager, I can right click on the equations folder or any variable listed and choose Manage Equations from the menu. The equations I defined in the part have been added to the equations list in the dialog. Before making a change, I want to point out that I have an option selected to automatically rebuild. This will allow the model to rebuild as I make modifications within this dialog so I can preview the changes. I'll highlight the SM radius value, change it to 5, and hit enter. I can see the equations update, as well as the model geometry. I'll preview a value of 1 for the small radii of the part, and I can see the model is behaving as intended. I'll change the value back to 3, and select OK to close the dialog. Besides just setting dimensions equal to each other, global variables can also be useful for mathematical expressions. For instance, this model was designed by creating half of the part, then mirroring it to create the desired symmetry. So the dimensions driving the design of the plate and housing features represent half widths rather than total width of the finished model. I'll create a global variable to define the overall width of these features and use equations to properly control the values in the mirrored features of the part. I'll start by accessing the equations dialog once again and click in the cell to add an additional global variable. I'll name the first one overall boss and give it a value of 125. You can quickly navigate through the fields in the dialog box using the tab key on the keyboard as well as clicking with the mouse. I'll add another global variable named overall base and set it equal to 245 and click OK to close the equations dialog. Next, I'll add an equation to control the width of the plate feature. Double clicking a face of the feature will give me access to its dimensions in the graphics area and I'll double click the 110 width dimension to modify it. I'll type an equal sign and start the equation with the global variable I created for the overall base. Since this dimension represents half of the overall width, I'll type slash 2 on the keyboard. The tooltip next to the cursor shows what the equation evaluates to. I can also hit the green check in the text field to complete the equation and toggle between the expression and the calculated value using the equation button. I'll click OK and rebuild the part. Now I'll do the same to update the housing features dimension. I'll double click a face of the feature, double click the 60 millimeter width dimension. Using the equal sign in the modify box will allow me to relate this dimension to the overall boss global variable, divided by two. This time I'll hit enter on the keyboard to complete the equation and enter again will close the dialog. Rebuilding the part will update the geometry to the new value. Now I can control the overall geometry of the part using equations. I'll open the equations dialog again from the feature manager tree. And by changing the values for overall boss and overall base, 
I'm successfully updating the features of the model. I'd like to add one more equation to this part. I need to ensure that the counterboard holes in the base plate maintain a minimum distance of 8 millimeters from the edges of the plate. The holes and the corner radius share the same center point. I'll use this information to determine what size the fillet radius should be. I'll start by creating a global variable called min edge distance and set its value to 8. Besides just adding equations into the modify box for a dimension, equations can be defined in fields of the property manager or in the equations dialog. Since I'm already working in the dialog, I'll add the equation directly into the list of equations. I'll double click a face of the fillet feature I'm interested in to access its dimensions. I want to create an equation that controls this radius. I'll click in the cell to add equation, then choose the radius dimension from the graphics area. The radius of this feature should equal the minimum edge distance, which I'll select from the global variables list, plus the radius of the counterbore. To make use of an existing dimension in an equation, I simply need to click it in the graphics area to populate it into the text field, much like I just did with the fillet radius. To use the dimension from the counterboard hole, I'll first double click a face of the feature to show the related dimensions on screen. Since there is only a diameter dimension defining this feature instead of a radius, I'll select that to use it in the equation and divide it by 2. Once I hit enter or click the green check to complete the equation, I can see the calculated value of the fillet radius and the geometry of the part has been updated. Making a change to the minimum edge distance that's required will automatically update the radius value. If I ever need to delete an equation, right-clicking in a row of the dialog will give me this option.